Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, I've been sharing lots of thoughts with you from Monday and today is Friday. Listen, what you should be concerned about now is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 21 and verse 36. This is all so important. Now, I was concerned. Listen, I'll tell you this truth. I was concerned um, two weeks ago when the word of the Lord came to me and he said, tell my children that they should get in position and begin to pray in the spirit. And he actually said for at least one hour a day. And then the Lord told me why. He says, the reason is I want to prepare my children by myself. Now, I don't know how many of you took, took that instruction seriously. If you haven't, listen, go before the Lord and say, Lord, I release myself to you. And, and, and if you can pray in the spirit, just begin to pray in other tongues. Listen, this is a time to pray in other tongues like never before. And if you, if you think you are a believer and you don't speak in other tongues, you need help. I, I told you what to do in that video. Go seek, look for someone who's truly saved. Get his hand and say, look, brother, sister, I want to speak in tongues. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And let them pray with you. And the anointing of God's Spirit is going to come upon you. And you will begin to speak in tongues because this is very important. Now, now, the way the Lord spoke to me that day, I, I was telling my wife and a few people, I said, look, the way the, this word came is as though Jesus is coming. See? Because he said, I want to prepare my children by myself. And that's why he said, we must pray in the spirit. You know, I remember a few days ago, my daughter shared with me that <clears throat> now my daughter is just five, going to six this year. And she said, Daddy, I dreamt about Jotam. Jotam is my son, her younger brother. So she said, I, I dreamt about Jotam's birthday. And, and, and that day I was taking her to school. So I said, okay, when you come back from school, you, you share the dream with me, okay? She said, yes. So I said, okay. So somehow we forgot. And then I, I remember. So I said, Zura, you told me about Jotam's birthday dream that you had. He said, oh, yes. I said, tell me about it. And I was with the mom. I said, tell us about it. And she said, Jesus came and took us to heaven. And then we celebrated Jotam's birthday in heaven. I'm like, what are you saying? She said, yes, that in the dream, Jesus appeared and said, we should come to heaven. And these were her words. And then she said, an angel brought a flying car. And we all entered. And she mentioned everybody that entered that flying car. And then we, we all flew and then we went to heaven. And then she said, so, so what then happened next? And we were now celebrating Jotam's birthday in heaven. So how did we celebrate? Said we, there was cake. We cut cake and all that. And, 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 and I looked at my wife. I said, well, whatever the Lord is doing, we, we are just ready. Praise God. Now I'm not saying. I'm just telling you an experience I had with my daughter this morning. Praise God. Now listen. But you see, the Lord who spoke to me before that had told us that he wants to prepare us himself. And, and let's just set ourselves before him. And let him. See, because, listen. The Bible says we know not what we should pray for as we ought. And when Jesus said he wants to prepare you, you don't even know what to do to get prepared. You are not going to be left alone to prepare yourself. He is the one that takes the responsibility of preparing his bride. You see, that's why in Ephesians, say, husband, love your wife as Christ loves the church. Now, what did he say? He is cleansing the church so that he will present the church to himself. A glorious church having no spots or wrinkles or any such things. So when the Lord comes and says, I want to prepare you. He's not telling you to go do anything. He's telling you to submit yourself to him. And let his spirit begin to do the work inside of you. And what work is he doing? Taking away everything that is not of his. Now it means in this, ah, listen, I don't understand. When you don't pray in tongues, I don't know how you live. Sincerely speaking, I don't know how you live. I don't know how you live the spiritual life. And I shared, I shared this you know, one time with a few people. I said, try this. It's an experiment. Someone hurts you. 
you are angry and you feel all sort of anger in your heart, go before the Lord in prayer and say, I'm going to pray for this person. Listen, even if your prayer point is that God should punish this person and deal with this person, if that's what you say, say, Father, I'm so angry right now. I want you to deal with this person for me. And then switch. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. Start praying in tongues. Now you're praying in tongues. At first, the anger will still be in your heart. And then you're just praying in tongues, praying. All you can think about is how evil can come on this person. Continue praying in tongues. At some point, things will begin to change. I'm telling you the truth. You, you can try this. And that's why, listen, even the Lord recommends one hour. This is not five minutes prayer now. Try this experiment for one hour. So at first, that anger will be there. But soon, you will notice that things will begin to replace the anger. And, and the anger will begin to go away. It will begin to go away. It will begin to go away. And suddenly, the love of God is just going to fill your heart even towards that person. And then you'll find yourself saying, but why are men so wicked? Why do men choose to do evil? See, what's going on? The anger is going. The love of God is coming in. You're praying in the spirit. You're praying in tongues. And then soon you begin to look at this person again and you begin to see how the devil, just that this person submitted himself to the devil. Now you begin to see how to save the person on your knees. And then by the time you are done, in, in, in 45 minutes to one hour, I'm telling you the truth, you will look for that anger, you will look at that person again and there will be so much love flowing in your heart towards that person. And you find yourself going to that person and saying, so sorry, I was angry yesterday, but I know you really made me upset, but you know what? I, I let it go. The person may not have even apologized. You will just find yourself doing that. You can never beat the Holy Spirit when it comes to preparing you for the right thing. That, that's what he does in your life. If you still maintain that anger after praying in tongues for one hour, I will tell you this for truth. You were not praying in tongues by the Holy Ghost. You were just blabbing. There is no way you will pray in the Holy Ghost for one hour and anger, an iota of anger will still be left in your heart. It is not possible. I know it's not everybody that prays in tongues by the Holy Ghost. I know some people have just mastered the act of talking gibberish. Now that's why you must be sure. How are you sure? It's not the speaking alone. When you are speaking because he's the one giving you utterance. So first of all, you notice that he's the one giving you utterance. You're just speaking. And you just know it will be sweet to your hearing. Because you know you're not making it up. Praise God. Listen. It's such a blessing every child of God should crave for right now. And if you don't have it, get a believer. Call our number. We'll pray for you. Get someone who's born again and you know is genuinely born again. And tell the person, hold my hands. I want to speak in other tongues right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for you that the Spirit of God will guide your heart and your mind. And I pray that he will count you worthy to escape the fulfillment of all the things that have been written that will happen in the world. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Bye-bye.